But taking on these manufacturers is no small task. With only eight months to create a winning P1 race car from scratch, Acura turned to their longtime technical partner, Nick Wirth. A former Formula One team owner based in England, Wirth has become an integral part of Acura's P1 effort. The best cars, like the Audis and the Peugeots, are diesel-powered. And we're not talking about bridging a small amount here. We're talking about bridging two to three seconds a lap on a conventional circuit, five to six seconds a lap on the mall. I think there'd be a lot of anticipation that Acura would come with a diesel engine just because that's what everybody else has brought. Well, we don't have diesel engines in our lineup here in the US. We've always been about lightweight, highly efficient gasoline engines. And that's the route that we've chosen to go. So when we were looking at how we could go out there and, and win in the P1 category, we realized that we couldn't do it solely with an engine. A conventional race car design approach probably wasn't going to work. Well, if you throw out convention, what you're left with can be truly extraordinary. Acura came to me and said, is there any way to make a gasoline car compete with a diesel car? Is it possible to do? And uh, so I went away, sat in the bath, and uh, lost many nights sleep over it. And all of a sudden, it was this aha moment. Acura decided to reinvent the wheel. If we took the rear tires, and put them on the front as well, so having four equal sized tires, we would have a car which had more rubber on the ground and potentially more grip than our opposition. The trick was then to try and minimize the problems in doing that. And the opportunity we had to do that was using this technology development in the digital domain. Worth has devised a revolutionary new way for Acura to accelerate their car's development. Acura's first ever P1 car is being wholly designed, built, and tested in a computer simulator. The first step we do is we replace wind tunnel testing with testing in computer simulation of wind, which we call CFD, computational fluid dynamics. Unlike a wind tunnel where you might be able to hold a smoke probe or you might be able to get a pressure or force off it, we can see the really tricky areas like how the airflow is going over suspension elements, which are completely cut away, you can't see in a conventional wind tunnel. There are over 500 computers linked all together to form four giant computer clusters which run 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, churning out solutions uh, for this LMP1 car. The next step is we design everything in the virtual world and stress everything in the virtual world using fairly conventional CAD systems, but, but uh, to a quite a high level. Using virtual reality enables us to create a three-dimensional virtual world which the car exists in. And this helmet system here, it tracks in real time and allows us to do this uh, amazing virtual mock-up work, replacing the need to actually having to build anything. And then the final step, the, the icing on the cake, is, is being able to bring all of these elements together synthesize them and create a virtual car, a virtual vehicle model, and actually run it on a simulator and get a real racing driver to come in and test that car and give you feedback and let you measure his performance just like you've gone to the track. How's it feeling, David? It does feel different to the P2 car, it feels a bit lighter. I mean, you guys did say that uh, this will be heavier, and I can definitely feel it. I don't have as uh, good a vision in terms of the apex as I had in the P2 car, though. I think the weight distribution feels a bit different as well. Actually, braking uh, stability is pretty good, and, and the grip under braking feels uh, very, very good, actually. Traction's actually pretty good. I haven't had uh, too much wheel spin. After months of digital development, the car is finally coming to life in the real world. Big wheels and all. 
So the car you see behind me going together now, it, it, it's a real car. It's not a mock-up anymore. Uh, and this is the chassis number one. This is the DeFerron car. Probably the most interesting feature of the car, the one that's had us scratching our heads most of all, is really focused on probably the largest front tyres that have ever been put on a racing car. These tyres are actually the same size in all respects as the rear tyres. Putting big front tyres on, the first thing you have to deal with is the air that's coming and hitting the front of the car has to go somewhere, and so it's got to go around bigger tyres now. So from an aerodynamic standpoint, it's generally uh, viewed as uh, an initial negative that has to be dealt with. Uh, the center of pressure, the aerodynamic balance of the car is going to be shifted as well. When people see it, they'll question the logic and they'll immediately jump to a conclusion about, well, that why it won't work, and, and yet then they'll reflect on, wait a minute, if they're doing it, so maybe it does work, and what is it that I'm missing, and, and it's, it's kind of an unconventional approach. I guess we're still in the process of determining that, our, that we're right, but uh, uh, time will tell. From virtual success, man, this simulator works, to real frustration, Project LMP1, Acura's next challenge, returns in a moment. In the computer simulator, the new wheels are yielding promising results. But so far, those results are still just on paper, and it's already the end of October. You may not believe it, but we're about a week away from a shakedown test here. <laughs> We've got a few late nights ahead of us. It's a very exciting time. We're expecting any minute for the real engine to arrive, and we're hoping to be pressing the button in two days and hearing this thing burst into life. Spoken like a true optimist. Well, the car's uh, original shakedown was planned in the UK for the very end of uh, uh, October, and as things tend to do, there's a, it kind of conspires against you when one, one problem happens, and so we backed that up, and we ended up shipping the car without a shakedown. The shakedown was an important first hurdle, and Acura missed it. From this point forward, it'll be a game of catch-up as the team scramble to get their cars operational for their allotted track days. And as Acura descends on Sebring for their first test, you can practically hear the clock ticking. This is day one of a four-day test. We'll be testing. We'd like to be out there right now. Unfortunately, with uh, new car blues, there's a few little things that have got to be done. A few big things are going to be done as well. And, uh, We've got to get our, our arms around this thing as quickly as possible to be able to get out there and, uh, and get some testing done to develop the performance of the car. It's just turned 4.30. Today was supposed to be the first day of running of the new Acura LMP1 car. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to make it out here on the racetrack today. Uh, problems are occurring, problems are being solved. Uh, unfortunately, time is running out for us today. They've been kept off the track by a serious problem with the hydraulic steering. And as the sun sets on a disappointing day, one can't help but wonder if maybe there's a reason why this radical concept has never been attempted before. Today was scheduled to be the first uh, the first run in the car you know usually in a day like today we would have done just a few laps and uh, come in a lot of uh, I guess we call exploratory laps but uh, it didn't happen so uh, hopefully we'll we'll do that that tomorrow it's been a long day for uh, for everyone and it's gonna go on for a few more hours it's now uh, 6 15 it's probably gonna go on until about midnight and uh, but tomorrow I think we'll we'll be able to get on the track you get straight out Finally, on the 19th of November, the long-awaited moment arrives, and DeFerrin becomes the first driver to bring this car to life. 